The most experienced and trusted Jedi were given the most elite clone units to lead into battle. We know that most members of the Jedi Council would lead a core of around 42,000 clones. They would be assisted in this duty by a Martial Commander. For example, Obi-Wan Kenobi led the 7th Sky Corps with his Martial Commander, Commander Cody. But it is never officially said in the TV show or films what unit or commander were attached to Mace Windu. Today I'm going to break down this unit and try to find its commander, and figure out why we rarely see them during the Clone Wars. So, firstly let's address the Bantha in the room. If this unit is led by Mace Windu, one of the highest ranking Jedi in the Order, why does he only command a legion of 10,580 clones? For those who don't know, I have a video explaining how the system works, but just to explain it quickly, the Grand Army of the Republic is comprised of 80 cores, each of around 42,000 clones, for a total at its peak of about 3 million troopers. Then if we break down each core, we can see it has a total of 4 legions. So going back to that question, why does Mace only command a legion? Well, he probably didn't. Just because we never hear about a unit above the 187th doesn't mean it does not exist. For example, we don't know what unit is above the 104th battalion, but we assume there is still one above it. So, for simplicity, we will assume the 187th is actually a core. Something I have realised about Star Wars in general is that despite it being about wars, it doesn't do a good job at structure, ranks, or really anything military related. Now with that structure out of the way, let's get down to the details. Like all clone units, the 187th's journey started on Kamino in 32 BBY, being created from the genetic template of the notorious bounty hunter Jango Fett. For the next 10 years, they would learn to fight and move as a single unit, from their individual squads all the way up to operating as an entire core. This immense amount of training meant that by the time they were deployed in 22 BBY, they knew how to fight and communicate most effectively on the battlefield. I think it's also important to note that when the 187th is seen in the Clone Wars TV show, it has a maroon slash brown armour colour. This is made even more confusing when in the final episode of Season 1 of Victory on Ryloth, Commander Pons is seen with Mace Windu wearing very similar armour, to the 187th in Season 7. Once again, Star Wars is not very good at the wars part. Anyways, back to the story, which is quite disappointing. Not because it's boring, but because we have absolutely no idea what it is. However, this gives us plenty of room to theorise. My theory is that the 187th stayed with Windu during most battles, apart from when Windu was commanding other units, such as 91st Reconnaissance Corps. We know that Windu was constantly moving around the galaxy and assisting in battles with other Jedi's clone units, so it only seems reasonable to say that when Mace is on a planet, the 187th, or at least part of it, was fighting somewhere else on that planet. Now I know how much everyone likes the clone commanders and how unique they each are, so I have tried to find as much information as possible and although we don't know his name, we do know some information from legends about our missing martial commander of the 187th Corps. By the way, before someone comments it, I have no way of knowing if this commander was a martial commander. But if we use the same logic as with Commander Wolf being Plo Koon's martial commander, I think it makes sense. Anyways, we don't have a name or a number, but we do know that he was an airborne trooper and that he fought during the Siege of Dantooine, as well as the assault on the Jedi Temple. Many people forget that it was not just the 501st at the Jedi Temple. They are just the most seen and therefore the most talked about. I will leave Wikipedia and Reddit links in the description so you can read more on the Commander and his rather elusive unit. So finally I want to answer why we don't really see them at all during a Clone Wars TV show. And well, I think the answer is a lot more boring than people want to make it out to be. The animators have said that they just didn't see any reason to create another clone unit, because it would be too confusing for the audience. And I don't blame them. My own videos on clone commanders and the GAR structure have shown how much of a mess the system is, even without the Clone Wars TV show. So even if the 187th Legion slash core is kept in this limbo status in the realms between canon and legends, I personally will keep them and their badass looking commander in my head canon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and please let me know in the comments what you think about the story of the 187th Legion.